Holly Toynbee, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Very nice to be here. Uh, you're here to give a, a lecture tonight, uh, giving your views on the current state of uh, the political scene. Um, tell me, uh, with regard to Brexit, one of the big things on the political scene, why did the Remain Party fail? The Remain Party failed for some of the same reasons that the left often fail. It appealed to people's head and not their heart. It had facts, it had statistics, it had evidence, it had economists, it had every kind of specialist you could think of, from the Governor of the Bank of England to the head of the CBI to the head of the TUC, every kind of authority, every kind of academic of any repute really was on the side of Remain and they thought that would be enough. What the other side had was a straight to the heart are you British or not? This is about Britishness, it's about your identity, it's about who you are. Do you want to be ruled by foreigners? And however often you said, you know, this isn't being ruled by foreigners, it's 28 countries sitting down together deciding what to do together. They had the uh, whip hand by saying, no, no, our sovereignty is being trampled on. We want to control our borders. But of course, in the end, it was migration, migration, migration they went for the jugular by the end. And I'll be talking about that tonight, particularly the Daily Mail and Sun filthy campaign uh, suggesting that 70,000, 70 million Turks would be flooding into the country before we knew it unless we got out. I mean, straightforward lies. And I think the Remain campaign were not prepared for that. They were rational, they were sensible, they believed in evidence and they could not believe the volume of lies that were told on the other side. And they were kind of wrong-footed by it. You're a Remain I am a Remain. I am. I'm yeah. Remain. I've always been a strong pro-European. I think if you look at the history over the centuries of Europe and the tragedy of its wars, Europe after the last appalling war, coming together, sitting down together, all right, arguing a bit, but nevertheless recognising its common cultural roots, its heritage, we are countries that are very like each other. We all have the same democratic values. And out there in the world outside, well, you've got Donald Trump now, but you have a lot of very fierce, very undemocratic forces. Why do all these migrants want to come to Europe? Because we are the most civilised. So what are we doing trying to break it up and pull ourselves away? Uh, what an absurdity. And uh, from your, your stance as a uh, pro-European, what advice would you give Theresa May? <laughs> well, nobody knows what Theresa May really thinks. Maybe she doesn't even know what she thinks. Her problem is that she's sitting on the fence between the soft Brexiters who want to stay in as close as possible, stay in the single market, and the hard Brexiters who just want out, out now, don't care, never mind about negotiations. Uh, we just want out for the sake of it. And she dare not display her hand to them, much more to them, perhaps, than you know the world outside. And so we don't know what she thinks. My advice to her is to be very straight talking and to say to the British people exactly what she thinks we have to have for the sake of the economy. And if the time comes when she sits down to negotiations and she finds that we really do have to make compromises if we want to save our trade and make sure we don't lose a lot in our standard of living, she's got to speak to people face to face and say, you know what, Brexit's not such a good idea the least we can do is to stay in the single market, even if that means we have to accept some things we don't like, like perhaps free movement. I don't think she's got the guts to do it, but I hope if we reach that crunch point that she will. And uh, you talked about, um, well, we talked about curious times in politics. Were you surprised when Donald Trump got voted in? I don't know. After Brexit, you were kind of ready for almost anything in the way of visceral shocks. But yes, uh, I mean, astonishing. I interviewed Donald Trump back in 1988, and I think I was probably the only person who actually got him saying if he wanted to be president, he would be president. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.